You voted and now I'm ready to deliver. I put up a poll asking which of these Missouri Star Quilt Company Advent Jenny's Count on the Christmas Box projects I should do. It was between the Quilt More Worry Less Wall Hanging and this Disappearing Hourglass Pattern. So between these two, this one won. Everyone wants to see this Disappearing Hourglass Medallion Pattern. It's a 10 inch square project and it, it, the project is in two colors, this navy and white, but since it's with squares, it's going to look a lot more scrappy. And I've been following along on people's projects on Facebook and what options they, they selected. And you need one package of 10 inch squares and then another package of 10 inch neutrals. So most people don't buy a package like pre-cut like that. They take, I think it's three and a half, yeah, three and a half to four, they'll take four yards and cut them into their own 10 inch squares. And I don't wanna do that. <laughs> and I'm also not attached to the size of this pattern. It finishes at 68 by 68. So it's a pretty large throw. So what I'm gonna do, some people were asking what it would look like to have a pure scrap version of this. And I've been wondering that too. So I picked this one called Baby Bloomers from Island Boutique. And I think, you know, obviously within the name, I mean, this is a bunch of cute baby colors. So there's the name. That ice band if you want to see it. So with Baby Bloomers, I think that it'll make just a really cute baby size quilt. The finished block, it's 11 inches, but finishes at 10 and a half inches square. So we'll just say 10 inch. And I can get each block is two squares. So I have 40. I have 42 of these, but so that would make 21 blocks. But you can't really do a good baby quilt layout with 21. So 20 blocks, four by five, 40 by 50, plus a border. That's a good baby size quilt. So I'm just gonna use this and see how it turns out, and I'll take you along. So thank you for voting, and let's get situated. This party kicks off with separating our squares into lights and darks. I have two extra, so I picked this high contrast pattern to set off to the side for another project. These squares need to be sewn on all four sides, but they're not all perfectly square with each other or there's a shift in my sewing as I sew down the line. So just pick the shorter of the ones that go to the side because these get trimmed down a lot in the end. So you have that wiggle room to just, if you, I'm not sewing straight, it's gonna be all right. We just have to keep these seams together. So that gets sewn all the way down, all four sides. I did that for each light and dark pairing that I chose. And now we're gonna cut side to side from corner to corner. And when we do that, we have new squares four squares from our two that make half square triangles. I did that for the whole set and then I set it up on my ironing board. I press each of these just to the darker fabric and I was consistent with that. You want to be really careful because now that we've cut this diagonally, the seam is going to be on a bias. We handle that by pulling our seam in the center and giving it a little mush mush. Don't stretch it or pull it. Gently press. I'm moving my iron from this diagonal seam so that I don't distort it too bad. So now that those are all pressed, I found that I had one that I didn't sew the side of the square. So now I have two loose triangles. I had to go back to my machine, get that edge sewn up, and then it's time to trim this down. It's kind of an obscure side, and what I like to do is just pick my straightest side that will go against that diagonal line, but I sewed this so crooked that I have to trim all four sides <laughs> to make it the right length, and I also had to pause and check the pattern because I was too afraid to make this cut, but it it is a weird size, but it all comes together, so just take your time and <laughs> get it all trimmed up. And then we have these perfectly flat half square triangles. And that gets repeated through the whole stack. 
Now to sew these all back together, we're gonna take our pairings and this is the shape that I went for, this light to dark triangle. I just kept that in mind and I did that for the whole stack where we're just gonna then take this and I was able to press it to the darker side of that triangle and then put them back together and that is a hourglass block. So once those get all sewn, then you just pick a side to press towards. And then this is a whole cut, spin, cut, spin. We're cutting the two inches from the seam, carefully turn it and cut the next two inches from that seam. So it's, you're gonna have to bring your game face, but it, this is a fun block. It's easy to do. And as long as you don't cut on the wrong line, it, it works out just fine. I had some that were a little bit off. All works out in the end, it's fine. So then we're gonna turn to make the block. I had to refer to the pattern. I did this very carefully for the first time for this one block until I had it right. And I want you to know that the seams will not work perfectly from the little tiny new triangles up against the new block. So don't try to match every corner perfectly because the way the measurements work out, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I took a little video of my trash. Like I thought that was so pretty. Once I got one finished block, I just cut the rest of the blocks, put them in a scrap container bin and sewed each block through the whole stack. So I always knew what I was looking for, where the dark angles went and I didn't, have any of these turn out wrong. They're all in the correct orientation. So now laying out the block, this is what the medallion looks like. Those are all similar purples, but since I'm using a whole fabric line, I don't have enough medallions to really keep up that design. So after putting everything together in their little clusters, I didn't like how that looked. Instead, I spaced out that purple throughout and I have this diagonal pattern instead. And I really, love the way this is looking so we have this little you know you have to trust the process this is a weird looking block but once you put it together this medallion shape comes through and this other secondary square pattern and then the final reveal is here i used the same border with i think it was a three inch border all the way around and i just love how it turned out i have oh just the cutest little blanket, like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> so then I've got some close-up shots so you can see the spiral that I did for the quilting. This is just free motion quilted. So here's the spiral, and then my binding is a, it's yellow gradient. I just took several strips, put them together, and that is my final quilt. I love this pattern. I think it comes together really fast and I really love this take on it, making it the scrappy version. So let me know what you think, but I love it. I hope you do too. Bye.